hey, I guess he did this whole thing, and it wasn't. I didn't press. The record I, I didn't even want to interrupt you there, but anyway, it's all good, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where were we? I'm sorry about that. Sorry all about good, that. Man. All of you guys patiently waiting in the in the on the YouTube studio. Um, I didn't even realize it. What I didn't press the. It says go live, and you hit the button, and then I had to hit. I had to hit. Yes, I would like to go live. So that's important. So welcome everybody to episode two. This is the this is the show where we talk about sleds. We talk about where to sled. We talk about how to sled. We talk about products that help you sled. You get the picture, you know. We this is your go to source for everything snowmobiling. And we got Richard here, and he's passionate like me about snowmobiling. We met through the old YouTube, and uh, we're looking forward to great winter. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, know that you can also find this on, in podcast format it's called Snowmobile Sessions on Spotify and also on iTunes. So if you just go to either one of those platforms and, and do a search for uh, Snowmobile Sessions, uh, you will find us and you can download it and listen in your car while you're hauling your sleds up north or, or wherever you wherever you feel. So. Yeah, so anyway, I, I just to recap there, um, you know, like Richard's been great. This is our second episode. We plan on doing this every week. And the, you know, consider making a donation. There's a little link down in the description below after this airs. And it's uh, it'll help keep the, the, the show going, even if it's a dollar a month or whatever you can you, you see fit. But uh, just go through PayPal there and, and away we go. Just like greg did on july 11th he sent me a little note hey gary have a round on me and keep the snowmobile videos coming and he gave me two thumbs up so two thumbs up to you greg, awesome, Thanks, uh, greg. <clears throat> and i haven't spent that yet what i'm planning on doing is uh when when richard and i get snowmobile in this winter after we're done the ride we'll go to a pub or something and we'll uh we'll slap that 10 spot down on the table and see what it can get us so yeah <laughs> thanks greg yeah buy us around for sure Gary yeah, put a lot of sure. effort into this show, so it'll be good. Oh, good yeah, yeah, thank you. I mean, and everything we get, I'll put back into it. You know that. So, um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. They're like we're we're pretty excited about this. Um, there's uh, Richard and I have been been working tirelessly um, the days before the the shows, and we're just really shooting from the hip. So we're not even really um, we don't really script this at all. That kind nope. of thing. So it's uh, it's uh, it's just kind of off the cuff. So hope you guys are enjoying the format and we're trying to bring on some new guests. I mean, with the snowmobile shows canceled this year, uh, we think this would be a good go-to resource where we can promote products and suppliers and introduce different things that will help you enjoy the sport a little bit more, you know, and, and, uh, it's not really for, for anything, but, uh, but to help you, us help you help us kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah so, Sure, um, should I tell him about the other exciting news we have? Richard? Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, because he got us all excited. He's the one. He, he got you and I both going in this. So let's, let's <laughs> exactly. <do> that. <laughs> well, there's a, when I originally started this little adventure of doing live streams weekly and podcasts, I I reached out to another YouTuber, a hero of mine, and it's Rev Rider 550, and he's uh, he was excited. He wants to be part of this. Uh, and uh, next week we're gonna we're gonna debut the weekly partner uh, Rev Rider 550 every week on the show. So stay tuned because it's gonna get really good. So as we get suppliers on board to to uh, to showcase and uh, we'll talk about Rev Rider, but what's happening down in the U.S. this winter and where we're riding, where he's riding, and and see where it goes from there. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty exciting. I, we're looking forward to having him on board for sure. So yeah, I'm going to actually bring. Sorry to mention that. Sorry to cut you off, Gary. He's uh, the reason I got my salt. So I ended up watching his videos, and that's why I leaned towards buying my player's salt. So I just wanted to put that in there. So yeah, no, no, he okay. is good. I mean, he's. The, you know what? He's. I like him because he's probably he's probably the most knowledgeable as far as brands go, and it's not like a surface knowledge. Yeah. He actually does research. I mean, when you see yeah. his reviews. I mean, he, he was riding, he started on Skidoo, riding Polaris. He yeah. still would review Skidoo, and he, he'd review it good. 
but you yep. know he he review unbiased. So yep. and, and his um, dad his dad rides a cat too. So he he's he's covered all the gamut. So he's like yeah. very like very much like you and I. You you I mean we yes we ride certain brands, but we're not brand biased. Yeah, so. and I the the thing I love about it is he's like a reverse of me and Drew. He rides with his father, where I'm riding with my son. So it's <laughs> it's kind of neat. I, I'd love to get together yeah. with both of those with my son and and him and and his yeah. father and 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 I yeah. think that would be a hoot day. So yeah, it would be we'll great, see. man, to invite them up. Hopefully, we can do that sometime. Yeah. But let's get yeah, our guests sure. here. <laughs> yeah, I'll get our let's get our guests. Uh, I want everybody to meet David Cook. He's the uh, brand sales manager for uh, Uclear Digital, Uclear North America. Welcome yeah, aboard, David. to join you guys. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, hey, I got to tell you though, I'm, I was expecting more snacks in the green room here. <laughs> well, when you said get Some rid of all the red jerky or something, I, it, <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Next time we got to have an agreement in writing before we do this. So. Yeah. yeah, for That's sure. Good. We don't. We Thanks haven't got the right. <laughs> we haven't got the rider figured out yet for this show, but we're working on it. You know. Okay. So, good deal. Uh, you know, before we get into that, I want to review some of the things we talked about last week. So I'm just going to bring up another screen here. Um, hopefully you guys can all see that. But um, we talked about a few things last week, right? And and here's a, here's a, some pictures. Now, this wasn't the, the fateful trip that I talked about last week with the broken <laughs> toilets. But um, this was another wild weekend in Kinesis Lake. So this is my buddy Pork's uh, Indy 400. Um, liquid cooled 400 cc and he this is on one of the logging roads in in um in kinesis lake and then this was my first snowmobile ever this is a, a 1972 moto ski capri it was called the pleasure craft back in the day three it was a 399 single what year is that Gary? what year is that 72 okay 72 yeah, yeah. And it uh, it was a 399 single cylinder, and the compression release was broke on it. And we had on the track the lugs were they had you know how they used to have the steel strips. Yeah. Well, they were broken, so we actually used U U channel, and we we actually screwed them through the rubber track and with quarter inch uh, bolts and lock washers, and we left them hanging out about a half inch, three quarters of an inch, so it was like studs, and. Uh, this thing here was uh, had a manual recoil, so you wrap the cord around the flywheel and you tick, 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 tick. But you had to yeah. spray. The, the, the carburetor was open. It had this monster carb on it, and it would suck in everything but, but fuel and air, you know. Yeah, and and your, your the, jack uh, would be covered in oil and gas. Yeah. yeah. So you'd yeah. spray. You'd, you'd, have, you'd have gas and oil mix. You'd spray it in the carb. You'd give her a, a yank, and you'd let it idle. Well, the problem with this sled was, the uh, the throttle would be frozen all the time, so you'd had to had to use WD-40. So you'd set you'd, you'd start it up on the stand, you'd get the thing running, it would be running high idle, and then I run in the house while it's warming up, and I grab the I went in to grab the WD-40. Well, my older brother Mike here shown, he jumps on it and takes it for a rip. Well, we lived on a big cliff, like we lived on a huge cliff. Well, it, there's a video called Isolation on my channel. That oh, yeah. cliff is is what my house backs on. It's a little further than where I was riding there, and yeah. you can see how steep it is. Well, he goes barreling off. The throttle sticks open, and he just bails off the sled, and it goes over the cliff. So when I come out with the WD forty, I see him. I see him jumping off, and this sled going over the cliff. And this is him. And we had it hooked up to him like a a Ford four wheel drive monster pickup truck, pulling it backwards uh, up the hill. Oh, yeah. yeah, and it still yeah. ran after that. You can see the windshield's a little bit busted here, but here's yeah. him getting near the top, but it was pretty That's wild. Funny. Yeah, and my brother-in-law this... had an SRV. That's how I got into it. It's <laughs> a big, sing big single carb as well. And that right thing, I remember riding that. You got you stunk out gas and oil because it's big. I think it was a 65 mil carb. It was huge. It was ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I was, yeah. and the name Brack comes honestly, like he's the one that called me Brack because I yeah. basically, he'd build something <clears> and I'd, I'd wreck it. So then this was, he bought, this is an 85, 1985 Moto Ski Mirage 3. It's a 368cc, but it had the, the MX hood on it. Which, oh, yeah, so yeah. it looked actually faster than what it was. But this is a buddy's house up in Halliburton, like up in Bancroft. And he would let Dino and I stay there all the time. And we always wore helmets. This case here, I didn't have it because we were just farting around the parking lot. But 
you know, and Dino took a picture of me with his 110 camera, and you can see I glued these this thing on. This is my first on entrance into advertising, you know. I just <laughs> glued the text onto the picture just for a joke, That's you know, hilarious. well before Photoshop, but that was a cool sled. Here it is here. It yeah. was mint, man, and, and you see in the forums all the time about people going, hey, how do I get a black windshield? How do I get a black windshield? Well, you actually paint the inside of the windshield flat yeah. black. Yeah, and then the yeah. outside's shiny, but when you're sitting on the hood, it's it's like a nice, it's no streaks, nice clean yeah. cave. It was a nice. that was a that was a fun sled. I missed yeah. that one. I'd your like brother's to find your it. brother still right? No, he doesn't. I wish he would, yeah. and I would. I'd like to get him out, man. I got like yeah. two sleds, and yeah. he rode fast. Like he rode that thing like an animal. So well, this oh, is the exciter. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, eh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look at that I thing. Like the seat. <laughs> yeah i so, think the seat the seats ripped in this one the, the seat is been, well they were all i mean you sat down on them twice in those things tore they were they were brutal right the, the vinyl no this is fit. the one that this is the one the dog ate <laughs> and then we and recovered it this yeah. is this is my oh, this is the picture i probably used on Kiji, on it wasn't kijiji on penny saver at the time to sell it Hey, speaking yeah. of that, I was heading up to a customer in Huntsville yesterday, and I drove by your uh, the Pinecrest Hotel, <laughs> and it's it's no longer a Bavarian restaurant, and they're beside it. It's Chinese now. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, nice, nice. So we'd have yeah. to come up with a new guy. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> Gary, I'm not sure if you've been to, you. I mentioned to people that Gary's actually using his Uclear right now, communicating with us on, and that's how clear it is. Like I hear you crystal clear with it. Like this that's probably, that's kind of cool. This is probably a, a live podcast first i'm using yeah. actually a snowmobile helmet with yeah. a uclear bluetooth device and it was simple to connect you basically put it into pairing mode and i just went up to the the little bluetooth icon and it shows yeah. up as motion and i i click connect and you yeah. hear a couple beeps it says headset connected and away we go so and you know, I, thing, I, I, have a, I have a comment on that which is that you you know it's amazing when you work all day, every day on a particular brand or segment like I do with Uclear. And, you know, I've been on a handful of podcasts and different calls. And you, what you just did was pointed out that I, as the manager of the brand, have never actually joined the podcast while wearing my Uclear and a helmet. So when you told me you were going to do that, I was kind of like, oh, cool. But then the, the immature side of me, which does exist, was like, Damn it! Someone thought of that before me. I'm not happy about that, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad that you uh, that you did that because it pointed out. I mean, unbelievable the the different things that I've joined and been on training sessions with dealers or other podcasts for different writing segments. I never occurred to me to just put my Euclear on my helmet and join in for fun or just for for a demonstration uh, by Bluetoothing it to my laptop. And I, I've okay. known for years that that was possible. I just didn't occur to me to do it. So well, uh, you, go, Gary, first. <laughs> you are an innovator, sir. <laughs> Woo! You know what, though? I, uh, I, I wanted to surprise you with it, David. Like, uh, I kind of let the cat out of the bag to him this afternoon that I was going to be doing that. And I wanted to surprise you. And that's the thing. Before we hit record, I had actually said this was an industry first. And I'm well aware it probably is. And, I I feel, and again, I, I don't know what you've seen last week, David, but I feel bad every time I hear the crackling in my video because it wasn't the Uclear system that's crackling. It's actually the Sony camera that was crackling. And you guys, hopefully sure, this will yeah. demonstrate today how crystal clear this thing is. Yeah. And there's another there's another um, channel out there that did a review and they, sh they, they had a sample audio of the Uclear and it was totally blown to bits. Like, I don't know what filters they put on it to actually make this look bad, to make another product that they were selling more superior, but it is yeah. complete garbage. And I mean, this this thing, when I'm riding, I can hear Drew as clear as I can hear Richard and David when we're riding with this on. So, What, models do you, know, what model do you have there, Gary? You may yeah, I'm, or I'm familiar with that video and... Uh, in the in the four years that I've been you know uh, working with Euclear, I've never heard a Euclear sound the way that they uh, showed it in their video. I've never heard that kind of noise come through any of our devices. Even our entry level devices have a better sound than what they put through. So yeah, um, your demonstration today is a little more 
uh, what a person should expect to be able to get, um, you know, uh, on, on the trail or on the road. Absolutely. Um, to, to answer your question, Richard, this is a motion six. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's motion so, series, and there is one above it, and it's the uh, it's got the the only thing this one doesn't have is the crash of uh, the crash alerts. So if I actually okay. crash my sled, it senses that that the rider's down, and it'll actually call emergency for you. No way. So very similar oh, to like dude. an Apple Watch. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, great dude. technology. This technology, I haven't even scratched the surface on it yet. It is, this thing does way more things that I could even ever imagine, um, imagine a helmet cam to do, you know, like it's, mm -hmm. it's quite incredible, you know, so. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm blown away. The, I'm going to have to invest again, in one. Like yeah, I said, I, sure. I, I had an, an old system from 20 years ago. So I and I haven't got one back since I, I've gotten back into the uh, into the sport. So, but that's something I'm I'm really interested in. I was mentioning that to you last week, Gary, when we weren't uh, on air. That uh, I'm I'm going to look at getting one of these because it's it's yeah. it's great for riding and communicating with you know, hey, where do you want to stop? Where do you want to go? And you don't have to pull your cord off, get off your helmet, and yell, and what well, I yeah, can't hear you, sure. you know. So for sure. <laughs> Drew and I giggle all the time because we pull up and everybody will be off their sleds and trying to talk to each other and getting their, their cords yeah. yanked. And we'll just be sitting there laughing at them and just going, okay, yeah, what, you know, and, or if I flip up my helmet, he can hear what Dean's saying to me and, and that kind of yeah. thing. So, and again, we, like we, we use them plug and play. Basically with these ones, you turn them on, they automatically are paired, they connect, you get on your sled, you ride. And I think that um, I'm pretty excited to see about the new, BRP gauge because they inter they have uh, integrated in the the um, handlebar a volume control for the any Bluetooth headset so nice. it might it might totally be the the game changer for Uclear on a Skidoo product you know well, so cool. it's it's That's pretty cool. exciting so, so uh, what different models do you have David can you explain that to to the people that are listening yeah you know the the three major brands uh, Cardo Senna and Uclear. Um, are going to have kind of an entry level, a mid level, and a high level, um, and ours are definitely set apart in what we deliver at those different price points. Um, we just have a very different form factor and a different set of features, um, and so you know to, to break it down succinctly for everybody is you know our, our entry level product is called the Amp Go Two. Okay. Uh, that is a, a two rider system. Um, meaning that it, it'll intercom for two people, but it gives you the full intercom range. It gives you the premium speakers, no cheap speakers with it. So for somebody who wants um, excellent music, very good intercom, but just occasional for two people or they ride alone a lot, an amp go to is an excellent choice, saves them a lot of money. Um, they're even getting Bluetooth 5, all the newest stuff there. Um, nice. Then the next step up from there is we go to the Motion series. It's called the Motion 4. And now we're getting into the mesh intercom. We are the only company that is delivering mesh technology for under three to three hundred and fifty dollar uh, street price per person. And so, you know, like a Motion Four in the U.S. is one hundred and sixty nine, for example. That's a four rider system with the mesh intercom for people who are not familiar with the difference. You know, the the mesh intercom is once you've got everybody connected, that network is dynamic. It allows you to change your writing positions and it doesn't interrupt the daisy chain. If someone's disconnected oh, no or where they so change. So if you have different riders switching positions from back exactly. to forward, vice versa. Oh, that's great. Every yeah. 15 seconds, it is reconfiguring automatically. <clears throat> so when you're riding with two or three people, you tend to not really notice the difference. But when you get to three and above riders, and then people are changing and moving off the side and the front, the back, or going off on a side trail. Um, you know, people get disconnected, especially in the woods and the mountains. And, you know, with the old systems, uh, when you would come back into range, you'd have to fiddle with something to reconnect them. Or because it was a daisy chain, if the person in the middle were to be disconnected, he would also disconnect the person in the back. And That's with it. mesh, those things do not occur. So, it, it, from an ease of use standpoint, it's a huge improvement. Um, and uh, Uclear is getting you into that mesh level intercom, you know, at, at just our four rider system at, at sub well under $200 a person. Um, you know, and so, you know, that's a, that's some place where we stand out from a standpoint of 
what you get for your dollar. Um, then we go to the motion. The only real difference is there is that you're now you compare six people and you have the laser gesture sensor, which is something that we invented based on snowmobile rider feedback or just uh, winter rider feedback. Yeah. The gesture sensor is if you've got heavy thick gloves on and you want a method of control other than voice commands. Voice commands don't always work flawlessly for people. You know, right. they're getting better. They're getting better all the time. Um, uh, but, you know, a lot of times the buttons and things with heavy gloves, it's not a simple thing. So the laser gesture sensor allows you to just tap on the side of the controller to control the basic things like music, volume, which, you know, music track, you can start and end phone calls with it. You that's can, cool. you know, change your volume with it. <laughs> so that's there so that if you have heavy gloves on, you can still um, do that. Um, yeah. And then when you move up to the motion infinity, you're now getting unlimited rider pairing. Again, we're still in mesh. Um, okay. And you're picking up the the use safe crash detection and rider SOS system. Okay. So that has a separate accelerometer built into it that is constantly measuring um, on all three axes any impacts or heavy decelerations that you are experiencing as a rider. And if you have a hard enough impact, it will measure that and decide, okay, that was a significant impact. It'll set off the use safe. And it'll talk to you for 30 seconds saying, you know, uh, crash detected, uh, press the power button three times to disable. Otherwise, your crash message will send. And it gives you 30 seconds to kind of like shut it off. And if you okay. don't, and if you're unconscious or you're unable to respond, then it will send out a message through the intercom group. It will send out a text and an email to three emergency contacts with your GPS location, a map a list of any nearby medical facilities in your area, a custom wow. message that you put in, like, you know, mine says, you know, I may have high sighted. Here's my allergies. Here's my meds. Uh, here's my insurance. Uh, here's my wife's phone number. You know, so I put all that stuff in as well. Um, and then it also automatically attempts to dial the phone of your primary emergency contact. So it's, it, it you know, in the deep, deep backwoods, it's not going to get those messages out because you need one bar of signal for the, mm -hmm. to ping our database. Um, but it, it, at a minimum, if the uh, if you're in an intercom group, everyone in your intercom group will hear crash detected, crash detected, crash detected. That's and so awesome. everybody knows to just stop and go back <laughs> and look around and, and get to you quickly. That's um, amazing. In addition, you can set it off without a crash. You can just um, if you're in if you're in panic mode or you're you're stuck under the sled or you're just out of gas and like you don't have enough signal to get a phone call out. Mm -hmm. You can start hitting the power button and it will ask you if you want to send out an SOS. And if you hit one more time, it'll go ahead and send all that out um, by pinging our database. And we'll send out all those messages to um, just letting them know where you are and that you're calling for help, but it doesn't tell them that you you've definitely been in an impact. It tells them that you're calling for an SOS assistance. So. That's amazing. That's that's really Isn't cool. That and I mean, especially you know what? That would be awesome riding in Quebec. Like I ride, I do. We we ride in Quebec a few times a year. Hopefully, we're gonna do more this year. Um, like that's an amazing because I mean it's so vast and open there. You know, and when you got a group of guys, I mean, there's been a couple of times where I've stopped to go to the washroom. I've been at the back, and like you stop to go to the washroom in Quebec, and your guys are still riding. Like they're away. You know, so that's yeah. That's, yeah. that's a really oh, yeah. awesome feature. That's a really good feature. Oh, I, sure. I tend to, I've been lost from my group before in the past just because I got a bug in my helmet or something and I had to stop and deal with it. And, you know, if without, before the days I rode with comms, it's like everybody would just keep going for a while. And yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the comms in general, I mean, I hope that people buy you clear, obviously, but whatever brands you have, it, you know, it really does improve your writing and the products do keep getting better the connectivity gets better. The noise cancellation gets better. And, um, you know, for me, I've got kids, I've got several different machines I ride. And that's, you know, that's why I, I put my pants on in the morning is because I love riding and mm -hmm. I especially love riding with my kids and keeping them safe and coaching them and watching my son improve season after season with what kind of obstacles he's able to handle but knowing that I can immediately warn him when I see things that he doesn't handle well. If I see heavy ruts on a logging road, you know, I'm going to remind him, hey, pick your line. You got a lot of ruts up ahead. And, you know, he'll slow down and he'll do a better job. And it's just that safety factor or that, 
hey, go ahead and pull over here. I want to, you know, I, I saw a moose or something. Um, and, and that just improves things so much. There's a lot less frustration. And then I can hear him giggle or I can hear him say, hey, dad, did you see that little wheelie I did? So, it, it, <laughs> yeah, it, you know, yeah. do I want to yap nonstop while I'm writing? No. And so we just choose not to. But yeah. there's so many things that you, that I don't miss out on anymore that I used to. And it reminds mm -hmm. me of writing. You know, you guys were showing all those old photos of your first snowmobiles. It reminds me of being a kid in the 80s and, you know, my dad basically trying to scream at me to tell me, yeah. you know, don't do this or don't do that. And I couldn't hear him. I didn't want to hear him, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, you know, it, and I've seen other dads out in the desert or out here in Idaho, you know, trying to yell at their kids and riding right on their butts. And I don't have to do that. I can just say, hey, Calvin, uh, pull over for a minute. It's uh, time to take a leak, you know, <laughs> and yeah, he's like, yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah. He can hear me. It doesn't matter what I'm riding. If I'm in my Terex or if I'm on my dual sport bike or um, on my ATV, he can hear everything I'm saying. And uh, so, yeah, it, it's just, that's the story of why you wear comms on these off-road adventures. It's just, it's a safety factor. It's an enjoyment factor. And yep. you don't and have I, to know that the whole time. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong no, with saying don't. shut up once in a while, you know? And, and, <laughs> are they and are that, they cross compatible uh, guys? So like if you have the top of the line one, can you still communicate with the the entry level one? Yeah, and other brands too. Oh no way! And other, so they're yeah, sure the yeah, same. Any, okay. Yeah, any but you won't get the you won't get the some of the features with the other okay. brands. But but it's 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 a universal connectivity. My new ones will pair to my old ones, and, okay, you know, and cool. and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's neat. Just going on what David was just saying is he I went through that with the first generation nuclear devices that we had and you know drew was just learning and i thought well this is a great tool it's a great tool while he's learning to coach him along and then now he's he's more than on his own i mean he's like he's a young whippersnapper that's not afraid of anything and i'm the guy trying to keep up and it's it's great to hear that now it's now it's more uh obstacle avoidance and things like that that we use them Safety. for and, and we will joke and like, we'll say some stupid stuff and laugh our asses off, you know, here and there, but it's not like we're chatty Cathy on it. Um, but it's neat. Like David, you're going to see that transition of, of, Hey, it's tool right now because you're coaching your son along, but it's going to get to be a, a real piece of equipment, a real tool, a valuable tool on the trail when, when he's at the age of same as you. So, and that's, yeah. you'll hear, you'll hear buddies going, Oh, I don't like, to, I don't want to chat, you know, on there. And it's like, no, you don't have to chat. It's, it's, you wouldn't believe it. If I'm coming along and I see my map, a hard left, he, he's pretty appreciative of that. If you're doing, you know, 50 kilometers yeah. an hour or speed limit but, on the trail. Listen, and you have Gary, to we've all, we've all ridden, we've all ridden with guys. I, I had a couple of trips last year where guys blew a corner. Yeah, like literally. Exactly. And, and, and I mean, <laughs> my buddy of mine, Steve and I, I got a Gorda, you know, if he's in the room or not. Uh, one of his neighbors was riding with us and, and he blew a corner and Steve and I were waiting 25 minutes and we we're like something happened and we turned around. Well, it's because he blew a corner and had to wait for people to pull him out. Yeah. So right. Right. That, that well, and that's the thing. And you can, and, and like David said, you, most of my buddies will just keep going and you won't know until the next corner. At least now we can, uh, yeah. no, I need the cord to plug into the uh, wall. It's up in my office. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'll, just, I'll, I'll look into getting one of those for sure. Yep. Yeah. I'll get yeah. you on mine when we ride too. I'll, I'll get you on these yeah. ones as well because it's going to change it's, the it's, whole way you ride. And I guess people have this question. I just want to ask you this too, David, and obviously they are. But so it's easy to set up with any type of helmet. Like you can set it up with a, a Snowcross helmet type thing like the, the Titan. It's pretty easy to set up. Is that the CKX? Yeah, the Titan. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. That'll. Uh, it's a great choice, actually. The CKX... Uh, um, basically I haven't seen a CKX so we can't drop into, um, in, in fact, to be perfectly honest, it, almost any helmet that someone hands me, you know, I was just at Sturgis, for example, and I was installing Euclears all day long. And really, I think there was only one helmet that came along that I couldn't deal with it. Um, and that's just, that particular helmet is a, like a three-way break apart, the Scorpion, uh, Scorpion covert. And there's simply no location to put speakers in the helmet. Um, okay. Sometimes yeah. you run into an issue where the speaker pockets are not big enough. And worst case scenario is you might have to um, uh, depress or, or compress, I should say, or maybe even slightly modify a speaker recess just to make them sit flat. Mm -hmm. um, but they'll go into just about any helmet you can think of. Um, 
with very few exceptions, um, without modification or with very, very slight modification. Okay. And none of it's hard to do. It's all pretty common sense. Um, you know, most people can get one of these installed in, uh, you know, 10 or 15 minutes if, if it's their first time doing it. Um, or for someone like me, it's, you know, it's typically a five minute deal if no one's distracting me. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. No problem. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it, they're simple. And the, the new CKX Mission Helmet has actually pockets that they slide oh, into. Oh, nice. And just like this one as well, it's got, and I showed you last week, the ear pad actually has a piece of foam that's cut out and these things pop right in and it velcros back into the into the helmet. So, yeah, the, the newer helmets as well, they're, they're thinking about technology with them. Um, there's no doubt about that. I just want to go on to this. This is Streeter's Garage. Welcome aboard Streeter's Garage. Another great YouTuber out there puts a lot of heart and soul into the, into his channel and his review videos. And he, he works on a lot of old Polaris wedge snowmobiles. Um, yeah, thank you so much for this compliment. He, he says, Gary's done a great job over the past year showcasing the capabilities of the UClear clear products. I'm impressed with the range and clear line of sight. And I tell you something, the, you think you're impressed by seeing the video when you when you actually have them on it's it's even more incredible those were three clips that i found that i did that review video on the on the range the three clips that i found that i said i did the physical test but i knew where they were there's one that we were close to a kilometer if not more and i still had him and it's like yeah. you you know when you lose him because it says intercom disconnected and that's a great warning because even though you're not even though you're not communicating, at least I know if he gets further ahead or behind me and it says inter intercom disconnected, I know that, okay, be careful because I don't have him, right? Where right. if, you didn't, you know, if you didn't know, there's no sound. Like, it's not like you hear, you, you don't hear any sound right now. It's dead silence um, with it. So I wouldn't hear whether he was connected or not. So I could leave him in the dust. But it says disconnected. And as soon as he gets back into range, it says intercom connected. So we always laugh and go, welcome back to the show or whatever, right? We're always joking around with it when we hear intercom connected again, because it's like, hey, welcome back. Good to, good to have you back, you know? And, and it's like, and that's a, neat, that, that's a neat function just to hear that audible when you do lose and when you don't. But it's pretty incredible. And I mean, you think when you see the figures, what were we, 700 meters, 800 meters um, is, is in the video of my test. Um, that's pretty far when you're in a bush. I'm like, yeah. you can see, you can see I'm moving to catch up to him. And you, you, when you're riding together, you're never that far apart. I mm -hmm. let him go ahead until we disconnected and then I went and caught him. And it's like, if you're that far apart, he chances are he's stopping up the road anyway for you, you know? Yeah. So, but the other yeah, thing I asked you, Gary, before we started the show was uh battery life. And you said you'll get it out and it'll last you the entire day. Yeah. That's I don't pretty, even think about it damn anymore. Good. Yeah. Like the for old cold one, weather, like I, we were saying that David before, you came in and you're, I don't even think you were in the green room when we were talking about it, no. you know, with battery technology in the cold, that's hard. Like GoPros last 20 minutes tops, you know? So like Gary, you saying oh, yeah. that lasts the entire day. That's pretty amazing. So you guys obviously have some good battery technology in these as well. Well, we're using the top quality, you know, highly dense lithium polymer gel packs that we can get. Um, you know, so we're basically making sure that we're putting in the best available uh, right. But, you know, what, pe what people need to know is that whatever that battery is, is rated for in terms of the box, um, what it says on the box, 15 hours, 18 hours, is that's going to be very dependent upon how you're using it. And when you get down to, like, the free freezing, um, you know, you're, you're going to lose some of that battery life. And when you get down well below freezing, you can easily lose up to half of yeah. that battery life. Yeah, and now, any product. If, if you're doing music and intercom at the same time and running those speakers for music the entire time you're writing, you're going to burn through the battery a lot faster as well. Um, but, you know, we have a lot of sales in, in, in Canada where we know darn well it's cold in the winter. And most of the people are telling us they're getting seven to nine hours in the cold, really cold temperatures, um, which is adequate. But if someone calls and says, you know, I'm only getting a couple of hours, then we're assuming that we just probably got a bad battery from our supplier. We'll typically warranty that if it's a constant problem. Um, but for the most part, people are telling us seven to nine hours, um, even at like negative in negative temperatures. And that's usually enough. And if you do any charging on the trail, it doesn't take very long to to, to top them off. So 
uh, if I'm going on long adventures, I just take one of those little charge packs with me, just one of the ones I use for my cell phone. And if we're stopped for a little while to eat lunch or jump in a hot springs or chase some trout, I just, I'll, I'll plug it in. But I usually don't have to do that unless it's like day two or day three. And then I don't, you know, I don't even worry about it on day one. I never run yeah. ever. Yeah, no. And it's like, even our old ones, like the first generation, which don't even compare to these, but it would be the end of the day, like the, the dark of night and we're driving back and we're, we're the final stretch The we're in the home stretch and you get a warning and it's like, or you might lose the guy. But on these ones here, it, you do hear battery low or whatever. If you don't charge them, like you go out the next day and you, let's say you didn't charge them at night, it would tell you the, the battery level that you're dealing with. And again, I don't think like that's something I don't think about the Euclear anymore. I just, I just put the helmet on. There's Pepper, my dog. Um, he's looking the other way. Shy. She, I mean, um, the, uh, but I don't even think about the, the device anymore because it's so flawless. I don't even, and that's the thing. And I said in the video, I don't even think about range anymore because yeah. it's never an issue. It's not like yeah. you're like, like where you're thinking, well, how far was that? Was it only like a hundred meters? Is that like 800 meters? Or I don't even think about it. Cause it's like, it rarely drops me off unless it's like, like the Jeremy ride series that I did. You know, we were, we had a, a, a new timer on a sled that was breaking down that day. And it was just, it was so valuable to have because Drew would be way ahead with Michael on the 850 and I was at the back bringing up the rear and I just knew that, you know, it was a good spot to be because if he had any issues, I could radio mm -hmm. ahead to, to the yeah. lead sled. So, yeah, it's, um, it's hey, neat. A comment here, uh, Dave, maybe you can answer it. Can you charge it while you're riding? Is that possible? Like, is there, can you like hook a, a battery bank up to it while you're riding and charge it and still use it or is that possible? On the current version, you know, like the, the Motion series, there's only one connection port that runs your speakers and mics. Um, so there's not a charge while riding currently. What we did was just put in an extra long battery life up front, so it shouldn't be much of an issue. However, right. we are starting to develop and whiteboard, you know, the concepts and things that we want to add in for the next generation after Motion. And we are going to put in additional ports so, you know, and Gary will love this. So in the next generation, we do have a plan to have the speakers uh, plug in separately um, and therefore having an open charge port for charge while riding, cool. as well as a auxiliary out jack. So mm -hmm. that if you want to run it directly into a uh, camera, then you'll be able to do that as well. Ooh, um, yeah, I like that. that. Yeah. That's and, nice for vlogging, eh? That's nice. Yeah, well, and you know what? I run now with a mic. I mic the earpiece, and it's not yeah. it's not perfect. Like, I, I the first, again, it's a lot of tweaking as I go. Like, it's, you know, Richard, when you go out sledding, and you, you even, we even talked about it, you, we both got drones. And mm -hmm. you can't just pack your drones and your camera and everything, and then you go out there, and, and all your buddies just want to do is ride that day it's whatever you do when you're snowmobiling, you got to be all ready to go and it's got to be something quick and, and fast. And so I just put the, I just put another microphone on the earpiece and then I was driving along thinking, what if it's clipping? Like, what if it's really loud? Cause you can hear it loud. And I just yanked it down. So it was where it actually ended up was actually underneath the speaker pad. And it's still, you can still hear Drew, but this year I'm going to stick it right. I'm going to do some tests and stick it right back up on there. So yeah. I love that's that. Cool, I, though, I, knowing I, that. That's coming that David, that's, that's pretty cool feature. Like that's huge. Yeah. We yeah, are, you know, and this would be for anybody listening to this, anybody interested in, you know, what we're doing and what we're building, um, you know, constantly improving is a major part of, of where we're, you know, our, our, our focus and our energy. Um, and we're really, really in a listening phase, uh, as in like, we're seeking input, we're seeking feedback. And, you know, if anybody listening to this wants to shoot an email through our Instagram or Facebook, uh, call our 800 number, you know, any of that, or send it, send it to Gary, you know, send it to these guys, they'll get it to me. Um, but anything that people are saying, we wish you had this, or we wish it was this way, we wish it was that way. We're actively seeking that because the next generation is going to be almost completely based on what people are telling us they want. You know, uh, we've got that, that corporate culture 
reverse now where in, in the right direction that I've been pushing it, where we're going to build based on what everyone is telling us they want. And they're telling us they want those things. Um, with the motion series, there are some things we're going to deliver through firmware updates that you'll like anyway. So, you know, right now you're trying to solve this microphone problem. Pretty soon, probably before the writing season starts for, for snow, um, we'll actually have a group recording feature built into the app and you'll just receive oh, that right via on. update. So you'll be able to go ahead and just record the intercom group conversation and then just put that piece of audio file with your video and, and do your editing. Uh, that right way. So, yeah, that's, that's coming. It's being tested right now. And um, you, know, you, you may have noticed that we've added a bunch of languages, including French for, um, for our European and, and uh, Canadian distributors because have, have asked for French to be added in Spanish and a bunch of the languages. So as you can see, we, as we keep adding additional things, we're able to deliver those wirelessly. But from yeah. a form factor perspective, something like a hardware change, such as additional charge ports or auxiliary outports, that's going to require a whole new product to be developed. And so we are definitely doing that. Um, and you'll also see over the next year and a half that we've got some major projects going on with some OEM helmet companies. Um, cool. And so, you know, Gary, you were, you, you, let's remind it, people how you and I kind of met was that I basically saw some of your videos that you were using Uclear and I reached out saying, hey, thank you. Let me know if you ever need anything. Um, and you were kind of already on your way using Uclear. Um, yep. We helped, we, you know, we've, you've purchased the motion series. Um, but at this point, you know, you've done more work to showcase our product than somebody that I can pay. And you're doing it on your own in <laughs> a, 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 a grassroots way that we can appreciate. So I do want to support you. So going forward, um, as we come out with some of these new products, um, I'd like to just send you samples for you to test, for you to use. Um, you know, you. Uh, you know, you just you deserve it, and 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 I think that um, you get your your writers, uh, your your followers, and and your family would get good use out of it. So you'll see a couple of interesting helmets come out with Uclear um, designed, you know, around that helmet. Um, and then when the next generation of Uclear comes out, which isn't going to be for a while, the Motion series is still, you know. But when that one comes out, we'll make sure you get a set of those and. Cool. Um, you know, and cool. keep it going. So, you know, big thanks from us because, you know, people may not believe it, but we've never paid you. We've never given you anything. You, you know, this is something that you kind of discovered on your own. And that's what we really enjoy seeing. That's what we love. We, you know, and so very happy to be a part of it. And we'll definitely uh, get you some, some stuff to try out um, as well as maybe some future guests, well, I, you know, on, yeah, we do well, distribute sure. through Kimpex. We distribute through Kimpex in Canada. They also own CKX. So oh, okay. maybe, you know, maybe we can yep. get you hooked up with someone from CKX if you want. And uh, I work directly with Fly Racing down here in the U.S. So the Fly Racing Snow Division has some interesting people that you could talk to about stuff. So, um, Perfect. Um, yeah, I mean, if any of that would help out, then you have to let me know. Well, that's, that's great. awesome. No, thank uh, you so much. That's great. And if you have, if you need anything tested as far as the, the uh, that that recording to the phone while you're, while you're doing a group ride, I'd love to be in the beta version of that. That's something I can put through its, through its paces and then some. Okay. Well, that might be coming very soon. In fact, I think I have the, I think I have the beta software actually for that. Um, it's not something that would be public on our website, but I could get it to you. And if you want to Perfect. fiddle with it, that'd be great. Yeah. Or maybe, I'll, maybe I load it onto a couple of you clears so you don't have to mess with yours and just mail them up to you because you're, you you got a better handle on how to do all the video stuff than I do, so yeah, you'd probably be better tester than me. Yeah, we'll awesome. we'll talk about that for sure. Yeah. Actually, okay. Streeter's Garage is asking a question, David. He says, has you clear looked into any promotional offerings such as Black Friday or Cyber Monday to buy a set? Well, that is a very good question. So that, you're getting into the, the so. yeah, you're getting into the business side a little bit of how we distribute and how we protect the uh, dealers. So one of the things that sets us apart. Uh, you know, from a relationship with our dealers is we're the only comm company that is not out there selling direct to public and, um, you know, like trying to sell at lower prices on Amazon, eBay. Um, we, we have an MSRP map, you know, that we set at a, at a very fair, you know, MSRP that's lower than the competition. And we ask our online dealers to adhere to that. 
because otherwise the brick and mortars are completely uh, undercut. They're undercut by people online that just turn and burn product for $5 profit. And I'm very, I'm a big believer in protecting and having tight, good relationships with the brick and mortar shops, because without them, if we don't support them, who are you going to go buy that bottle of oil from? Who's going to help you out with that? Exactly. Rare part that you, you know, you, yeah. you got to protect the industry and be a part of it. And we are absolutely committed to that. But his question is legitimate. We haven't been doing very many sort of Black Friday sales because it's difficult to force 2,000 dealers to sort of be able to do that. So what tends to happen is your online sellers and your Amazon guys end up doing a big sale. And then you have customers walking into the brick and mortar saying, I can get it $30 cheaper on Amazon. Will you price match? So, um, however, we've had enough dealers like streeters say le recently that they think that would be okay, that we are at least planning Black Friday for this year. Uh, I'm going to send out a notification to Western Power Sports in the U.S. and Kimpex in Canada, letting them know that we'll have a period of uh, at least one week or 10 days around Black Friday where they can, you know, do a percentage off. In the meantime, what our, what our rules are is that online dealers cannot advertise large discounts. However, any brick and mortar or online dealer that you contact directly can sell it to you for whatever they want. So if you have a good relationship with a dealer, you can walk in and say, would you do this? Or I'm a veteran and I have a large writing group. Would you take a percentage off? The key is just not to have a price war start where it's supposed to be a $200 item and it's selling for $120 and the dealer's making no profit. That can't happen. It's unsustainable. As a consumer, you love to see it. But, I, you know, the long-term effects of that are devastating to small businesses. And without them, we lose the industry, guys. So, Sorry, I get on my soapbox about that, but if you're in the world, if you're living in the world that I'm working in and trying to be a part of every day, you realize how important that is. You gotta, you gotta support them. For sure. Yeah, that makes sense. No, total yeah. sense. Well, that's good. So I, I'm, I got a new mission helmet coming, David. So I'm, I'm gonna look forward to trying one of these out. I want to get one of yeah, those. and they'll, they'll pop right into the pockets on, good, on eh? the mission helmet. Yeah, I'm right pretty on. sure yeah. of it from what <sighs> I can see anyway, and that's. That's something is we're going to probably get rid of that helmet this year and get into a mission. So um, mm -hmm. just to, just to test it and see what it's like compared to the oxygen, you know? Nice. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's interesting. So um, do, do you have anything else to add, David? I'm kind of running out of time myself, um, but uh, I thank you for your time today. This has been awesome. Oh, nothing special to add. answer any, any questions that you guys want. Of course, I'll come on and, and be on here with you guys for a short segment or long segment, anytime that you want to invite me. Um, and uh, definitely for anybody listening that's got feedback, good or bad, hopefully constructive, for you clear on what they would like to see in the future. Um, we're not just open to it. We're, we're asking for it. We want to hear what you want to buy so that that's what we can build around and we are actively seeking it. So please, what you want it to do and what you want it to be able to, to, to look like and fit like is all up for design time right now. Um, as far as things to watch out for, we are working on some agreements with some major helmet companies. Um, I cannot discuss it any further than that, but they are big names in the industry. When those come out, we'll make sure that you, know, you guys are aware of it. You'll hear it first. You'll probably get an early sample too. Um, awesome. And uh, you know, as we come out with things that we're able to discuss, I'm more than happy to get that information to you early so that you can be one of the first uh, to know about it or, or adopt it. Awesome. Excellent. Now, are you, are you going to any shows, David? Because I know the, the show up here, the Toronto one's canceled. I know they haven't announced it, but everyone I've talked to in the industry said it's not going to happen. So are you, are you going to be at any shows at all anywhere that you can tell us about or, or is that not happening down there either? Yeah, we, well, we're going to a few. In fact, um, are you familiar with the grass drags that happens in the U.S.? Uh, yeah. Or the hay, the hay, or the heydays, right? Yeah, so heydays. Yeah, yeah. Heydays was canceled. It's actually right. we're set, setting up today for it. But what happened was local dealers decided they were going to put on a show anyway. Whether you know, and so there's actually a kind of like replacement for heydays called ERX. And uh, my road warrior guy is setting up our Euclid booth right now. No, right on. That's for awesome. anybody that's going, you know, that wanted to go to heydays. 
and right there with them, they're going to have uh, G Max helmets and Fly Racing and Woody's and Stud Boy and you know all the big brands that you need, you know in the in the uh, area are still going to be going. There's still some shows to go to, but they're few and far between. And I don't know which ones we're going to be going to because they're also up in the air. But you know we might if IMS is happening, we'll probably be at one or two of those. Um, but when we go, we go with a dealer that invites us because we don't like to sell direct to the public while our dealers are out there, all, you know, trying to make it happen. So typically we go when the dealers invite us and then we go and we support their booth. And uh, that's just part of our commitment to our relationship with our dealers. Um, but, yeah, we also were at Sturgis the entire time. That was amazing. Half a okay. million people. Wow. Um, wow. Just <laughs> I installing. saw that was still going on. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah half a million people almost none of them wearing masks. So that was insane. A oh, huge bottle of uh, hand sanitizer on my table. Um, but that was largely successful. People do still want to get out and go to these shows. Yeah, so sure. as we find out which ones are available to us, we'll be at quite a few, but it's hard well, to say which ones right now. Uh, there's apparently a massive snowmobile show happening. It's going to be larger than Toronto up in Quebec city. Did you hear about this? Uh, I, ha theory? I have not. I, I haven't heard not. that either. So, no. Apparently there's a large, a, a huge snowmobile show happening. I don't know in, in next month or, up in Quebec City, and it's apparently going to be trip. larger than the Toronto one. Road trip. <laughs> I don't. I know. I was saying that to Steve, and, and I was going to mention it to my buddy Gore here that's in there with us. So, like, oh, well, that's excellent. But, no, you know, keep us posted on that one as well. Yeah, I'll figure so. it out. I'll, I'll find out where it is. Steve was telling yeah. me about it last week, so yeah, for sure. But, Actually, when I hear David say the word uh, here or whatever, it, it sparks me to something I didn't touch on with these things: is that if you just use your your helmet for music. For streaming music off your phone you would not believe the sound quality of the ear pads in this thing it's it's like having a bose system in your head it's uh it's dynamite so if you're a solo rider and you just like to stream music and you want access to take a call on your phone here and there and stream music really good and then that's the thing you at least have the uclear communication technology in the case where you join up other riders down the down the trail it's pretty neat cool good Right yeah, on. So, well, yeah, I'm looking yeah. to ride them out uh, with you there, Gary. I want to see how this works when we ride together. I wouldn't mind trying it out. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, no, that's great, David. Thank you so much again for your time today. I know you're you're uh, had a crazy afternoon, uh, crazy day. <laughs> so, um, hopefully, next time we'll get you we'll get you on again, and uh, and we'll talk about some new things and what you're doing as the as the winter season gets upon us here. Well, we really appreciate you guys. Always yeah. a pleasure to be on here with you anytime you'd like it. Um, if there's anything else that we can do uh, to help you out with uh, your new podcast and it growing with guests or uh, products of ours that maybe we could supply as samples, you just let me know. You're doing a great thing. You have a sure. great following. It's That's such great. a legit grassroots effort that you're making, and I hope people appreciate it yeah. as much as we do. Yeah. Oh, thanks, well, Dave. Oh, I love you hearing that. This. I love hearing that. Yeah, you let me. We're Richard and I are open to having uh, anybody on that's that's doing something positive to contribute to the sport. That's the key. I, we're not going to align ourselves with with garbage. Um, we want to make sure that with the, the information we're sharing with our our followers and our fans is is quality and and going to actually make a difference in in their the way they ride. Uh, that's coming through, bud. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thanks. I appreciate uh -huh. that. Well, I'm gonna. I, uh, if you're ready to go, or do you want to hang out a little bit more? Uh, um, it's up to you, David. I can kick you to the curb, or we can keep uh, we can keep going here. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I've heard that it, you should always leave them wanting more. So go ahead and kick yeah. me to the curb, <laughs> and uh, just uh, just invite me back when if anything develops where I can be of assistance. Absolutely, awesome. we, we we'll definitely do that. And this year, I hope to to try out more of the features. And like I said, I don't. I haven't used anything. The hand gesture thing is neat. I, I had that on the first time I rode and it was, it was pretty cool. Um, but I, I just turned it off cause it was plug and play from there on out. And, and the, um, so I, I'll do some demonstration on how that worked because where it may be something I don't use. It may be something if you're taking a lot of calls on your, uh, on your device when you're riding that that hand gesture thing would be valuable because no gloves to take off or anything, but the buttons on here are really big and easy to use and, and fine. So well, at the Toronto show last year, I remember I was talking to you, Dave, because you were showing me the, the, the features of that. I remember the hand gesture stuff you were showing us. It was really cool. So oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. no, that was good. Yeah. Well, thanks again for joining us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, Always sure. a good time. Thanks guys. Yeah. 
And we'll Thanks chat you. in a few days, David. Thank you again. Cheers. Okay. All right. You too, boys. Yep. Bye bye. Yeah. So that's cool. That, eh? That's awesome. Yeah. You know what? That's all. And again, you know what? Like I said, I had the the call at uh, communicator 20 years ago yeah. and I liked yeah. it. And you know, like the three guys I rode with, we all had them. And, and just for that reason, like it's great. So, you know what? I think yeah. I'm going to talk to, I, I know some of the guys I ride with aren't keen on it cause they don't want to, like, I mean, some guys just like to have the peace and quiet, right? Like yeah. they don't want to be talking to you, but it's, it's more of the, the safety issue. Like, you know what? You can go along and ride and not have to talk. Like I get it. Don't talk. But like, if all of a sudden it's like, Hey, something's up here, you know, that, that's where you're going to appreciate it. Right. Yeah, I think if they rode with it once, they'd be converted. Cause yeah. they, well, they, you know, they I'm probably have this... I'm gonna, I think I'm going to end up purchasing one. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So, well, if we get up to if we get up the uh, if we get up to your buddy's place up in in Dorset, we'll we'll yeah. uh, I'll hook them up because I've got a few of the old ones here as well. Yeah. People just automatically think Chatty Cathy, Chatty Cathy. It's you yeah. realize fast it's not it's not that at all. Yeah. Well, my good buddy. Go, there's a especially early season riding as soon as yeah. you say stick or in the trail or yeah, rock yeah, in the yeah. trail yeah. or whatever makes sense. Yeah. hard right hard left they're gonna go yeah i get it yeah. it's yeah it's well my bad. good buddy gord's in the room here he's the fellow i stayed at all last winter uh there gary nice he's, I seen he's him on up. Too. yeah he's a great yep. guy another diehard snowmobiler this guy's been driving riding since jesus was a cowboy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey gord sorry gord hope i'm not dating you bud but oh, hey, there's Steve Jones. I can be bought. Uh, yeah, I can be bought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll you know what? Go. Honestly, you know what, Gord, uh, Steve, I'm, I'm honestly considering maybe getting us some to try out. Why not, man? If it helps us all yeah, while we're sure. riding, sure. Steve will probably turn it off and say, "Shut up, you're talking too much." But you know what? Yeah. But like you said, just for that, you know, I may just do that honestly, because those are the guys I ride with. So and it's uh, and yeah. we put on a lot of miles. So no, that's but cool. anyway, so uh, what else is new? So hey, how much, I got, man? I like, seen today. I seen today. Polaris uh, announced the new 2021 Snowcross, the 600 R. Did you read about oh, it? Did you see that? Uh, you actually just sent me a screenshot of that, but uh, yeah. that's intriguing. What What are yeah. they saying about that? Beat? So it's a brand new 100 600 class engine. Promises to give Polaris racers a big boost of horsepower. Uh, Polaris unveiled it today. Uh, it's specifically for Snowcross, but it's combined with the Mountain 2021 850 RMK Chaos which is kind of yeah. like they're, they're really done up mountain sled. Well, it's in between the full, the RMK and the, and the, and then a cross country aimed at 600 Indy XCR. So they're like, it's, it's basically to help the three pronged racing circuit, right? You know, the, yeah. um, obviously snow crass, hill climbing and uh, out in the mountains. So it's supposed so to be it, pretty it, good. So this isn't cons something a consumer. Can no, buy. no, it's, it's, oh. it's, no, it's basically for, for the racers, but it's pretty, pretty darn the stuff they put into it, like this new motor. So it's got a new throttle body EFI system, lightweight crank, uh, and flywheel, new head and port design claimed 10 horsepower gain in peak power and a staggering 18 horsepower mid range improvement over the last one on a, on a 600, 600. R, wow. Yeah. So. Wow. So I, well, I'll be honest with you. I think they were having, uh, you know, problems against Skidoo and, uh, and Articat, man, out of that whole show. So this should probably help them be a lot more competitive. So we'll see. Yeah, well, uh, I, know yeah, a, I know I know, a couple of guys that race, and the, the one guy was on a Polaris. And, and that's the thing. When you look at the, the, the podium, and getting to that first corner is key, huge. right? The whole shot's huge. The whole shot's huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's the thing. And, and they love riding the, the Polaris, but – when you look at the winner's circle, it's usually um, Skidoo and believe it or not, Arctic Cat, right? Mm -hmm. Is uh, is the big one. So that that's kind of exciting. But where that yeah, might that lead, like you see, that's yeah. funny because I was thinking, I was thinking BRP would ante up and come out with a 650, and then they do a 650 class in the race circuit, right? Well, but, well could because Polaris has got that new 650 motor too. I know, right? like, I know. It changes it depends on what the yeah, the, 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 yeah. the sanction the the snowcross guys do, right? And then it falls through. But I mean, 18 yeah. horsepower mid range. That's that's a torque mod. That's insane. that's insane. And that's where you yeah. use when it's snow cross racing. It's all mid range, right? Yeah, You're exactly. Not doing it's it's whole shots mid range. So. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. is it is it the VR1 Matrix chassis or is it the is it no. the old? No. So, so it, it's it's a verify. It's off the Axis chassis, but it uses the tunnel part of the Chaos. Like it's it's kind of it's like oh. a hybrid. It's it's yeah, a hybrid wow. chassis. So they're literally using part of the Chaos and the 600 Indy XCR, the cross country racer. They've, they've made a hybrid type chassis for it. So, but they it's built based a Frankenstein. 
it's, but it's, it's but it's based off the axis chassis like it's it's, oh, that's it's not cool. it's not the matrix or anything like that so yeah but yeah. it's pretty cool man so that's that's good for players for the racing see what happens there yeah so, for sure but, uh, oh that's good but, yeah, oh, i no, love that I love, I love hearing news like positive news from the manufacturers and what they're doing and now yeah. now people be getting into that that time of year when they're thinking about sponsorships and and snowcross yeah. racing and well, things like that and away you go you know what what are we september 10th here we're getting to the we're getting it's starting to get cold now oh here we go up on the screen <laughs> so I've owned, I've, owned, I've owned skidoo yamaha and now a polaris it's the first polaris i ever owned so i'm not brand loyal i go all over the place gord so but thanks pal <laughs> yeah actually so gord's so i want to have gord's son on um andrew he owns a uh he's part owner of a, a polaris dealer out in pemberton bc yeah, um, I'd sure. like to have him. I'd like to have him on. So it'd be great to have someone. And then you know we'll have guys on from Do and Cat and Yamaha. And, yeah, yeah. And, and reach out and so. see. So uh, actually, sometime is now. Um, love this guy. He's a fan, man. He's in our fan favorite video. There, you'll see. He says, Gary, does anyone in your group use the U Clear Motion and Modular Three helmet with the breath box? Yes, we actually. That's where we started with two Modular Threes using U Clear. Now, there it is muffled, so it's. You know, and I've tried placement of the mics everywhere, but you'll see there is a video on my channel showing how we install them on a modular helmet. And the idea is to put the microphone close to the mouth in the cheek. Even on this one here, they, the instructions will say in a motocross helmet or a street bike helmet to align them up here. That works, but we found it better. And I've even got them in this helmet mounted right to the front of the cheek pad. Yeah. And that's the key with the modular, with the breath box is one, put them low. If that, mm -hmm. That's my first tip. And the second tip is make sure that the uh, that they're not that, that they're low on the breath box, but but outside of it, so that the I think because the breath box is triangle, you get better sound uh, amplification here. If you mount them higher, it's more of a nasally and really muffled effect. Like in that in that helmet right here, the, it's got the breath box, and we've got it right underneath where the hinge is, yeah. and it's it's almost like it's almost. S it's almost crystal clear. It's See, muffled still, but it's not like being at the dentist. That's why you know? I asked him, like, I don't know if anyone knows, but the Titan, that has, it comes out, right? Yep. Yeah. So, and so I'm, I'm wondering the same thing. And then obviously the mission does, well, it doesn't do this, but it, it pops up like your modular helmet. So yeah, the, the mission, the mission has a, has a, a rubber thing that goes on, up, on top of the bridge of your nose. So okay. the whole bottom is open, right? Where this has nothing. But okay. that's what I do in that helmet you've got there. Yeah. I would put it right at the bottom of that hint where that hinge is. Where the hinge one is on right each okay. side, like right, right there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Here. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And uh, and then on the on the mission, what I do is I I think you're pretty good anywhere, but I just put it near. And then you'll see in the video of the of the oxygen. I'd show yeah. you where to put them there. So let me see. You can't even oh. We actually buried the, the actual microphone in the pad. So they're right in the okay. tip of the cheek pad here, right where that hinge is. So we're running the microphone. Let me see, get back here. We're running the microphone. If my thumb's here, when, it, when the mask yeah. is closed, the mic would be on each side there. So yeah. you're getting, like I said, you're getting the bigger area of sound. So it's not as muffled and nasally. And that's, cool. that's the thing yeah. you'll get with the, uh, some guys are drilling holes in the, in the rubber and putting yeah. the actual microphone in there, you're still, it's still muffled because you're still cut. Like, yeah. imagine talking. See, and, and, and you know what, Gary, honestly, like, 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 and, 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 and that's why I was asking uh, uh, Dave there about it. The good thing about it is he, they're working with mission, obviously, our yep. CKX and, and, and those guys. So, I mean, and apparently the mission has the, the cutouts for it. So I'll probably slap it on that helmet rather than this one. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, this is, this is good. I love this helmet, by the way, with the heated goggles. They're unreal, man. That helmet was amazing. But yeah. um, I think I'll try it. Uh, I'll probably, well, I'll mount it in the mission. So and see what happens. Yeah, for sure. The, and, and like uh, the thing is, I'd love to see your mission when you get it because it has the yeah. pockets and it's just okay. a little sleeve you drop the, the ear pad in. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. That's why the only reason I was thinking about upgrading that one to a mission was because it, it's easy, easy to integrate. And the, the only thing that, I, I bought the oxygen over the mission was that I wasn't really sure about that, that piece that sits up on your nose, how yeah. it would sound. So mm -hmm. I don't, uh, the bigger the cavity in here that your voice is in, the better it is. And that's the thing. When you mount the microphone on the outside of the box, mount it in a wide area, 
and then that way you when the sound's traveling out you'll get the most we had no issues with it with it in a modular helmet it worked it worked fine albeit not as good as this drew is blown away by the sound that he hears when i'm talking with yeah. the, with the oxygen on so it's great so well what do you see yeah. sometimes now i was looking at the titan helmet but always worry about the cold air getting around the goggles it, it, it's not an issue honestly uh sometimes now it i that's the best helmet i've, I've ever owned and, the, yeah, and so I, I have the mod, I have the version where I've got uh, the, this is the sunny, um, you know, for sunny days and that the yeah, yellow, yeah, yeah. and they're heated. I don't know if you can see it here. So, um, but they do sell the option where they're not heated, and apparently they're amazing. Like the venting system on this is amazing. This is an amazing yeah, helmet. And I'm they telling ran into you that, some issues like all of them when they first came out of the gate, but then that's why they brought the heated goggles out. But I heard you yeah. don't need them anymore. No, nope. you know, like, there's been there was a couple of times I was riding, I forgot to plug it in, and it and it and it was not an issue. I never had an yeah. issue with it fogging up or anything. So hopefully that helps you out, buddy. That there, that's a really good helmet. I love that helmet. Um, I, just, I don't. You know what? I tried on the mission. I tried them both on last year, and I thought, you know what? I like the, I like the. I don't know. There's something about the goggles, and I really do like them the way they fit close to your to your your skin. Like you don't get it. It actually helps you with the cold. But, yeah, you know, and around some guys it, so. like that look too. Like Rev Riders of real MX. He likes yeah. MX style helmets and yeah. that's the same type of thing. So I can go either way. I've had them both. How is that visor for catching wind? It's actually not too bad. It, it, I, I'll be honest with you. It actually helped me going across on sunny, sunny days when you're going into the sun and you, yeah, and you just like tilted yep, your head yep. down. It yeah. actually helped. So, yeah, you know, but, but does it, do you feel wind drag in that? Like my, when I wear my ATV helmet snowmobiling, it's, you can feel it pushing up on the visor. Yeah. My, my dual sport helmet, it's, it's channeled up high and the, the wind goes right through it. Can you see, can you see the vents? Yeah, I can actually. That actually, so, like, that looks like it good. literally, I get you it, bigger? it literally, literally goes through. Yeah. Like, nice. Can, there we go. Like, like it, like look at the size of those vents. Yeah, the vents are, it's nice, they're like, split it's, and they're angled up. I never nice. really had an issue. I never really yeah. had an issue like that. Um, I just found out today, I was telling Steve, I, th I mean, because that's an extra large helmet. I was a little larger yeah. last year um, and I ordered a large mission this year and I just went back. I thought I had it all fully tightened there. Gary, I still got another half thing, so it's, it, it, it'll fit better now this year. <laughs> yeah, wow, but, wow. But, but well, that's anyways. cool. Yeah, no, that's yeah, good. No, so you, know what I, I'm, you know what, I'm going to try, I'm going to, I'm going to try out that Euclid system. I, you know what? see how yep. it works it's, it's it a works beautiful out. product the um you know when like any helmet you, you put it on your head don't buy one because it's like a sled don't buy one because your buddy thinks it's the best buy yeah. one that because they're all good helmets like you you've got the, the, the titan the mission the oxygen the bv2s is a great helmet yeah. um but and the modular everyone asks about glasses this is really good with glasses obviously the oxygen the 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 BV2S, I would say, isn't as good as the modular with, with glasses yeah. because the modular is more air flowing. You get more leaking around the hinges and stuff, and you'll, you'll actually feel cold air swirling around. And that's why your glasses stay clear in a, in a modular helmet um, where the BV2S is more sealed. Like it's, you click the visor down like this and you feel it go click, click you know, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, so. you know what? It, it's like the sleds and everything else. I, I don't think you can go wrong with it. I, I don't like. Is there really someone making a really crappy product? Like, I mean, I guess there is, but for the most part, everyone I ride with has different helmets. You know, different suits. I mean, they're all pretty. I don't think do, anyone's making if, crappy products, if, but if you do, word gets out fast and and they change it yeah. real quick. You know, yeah. everyone's had issues. The oxygen had issues when it first launched. I know the Titan did. When it first launched, there's a few other yeah. brands out there. There's a couple that I tried and I just, oh my goodness, like I can't believe they're actually calling themselves snowmobile helmets. But, you know, yeah. but then other people are raving and reviewing that it's the best helmet they've ever had. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. again, it's like, it, it's right? not, it, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to experiment in today's world when you've got an $800 lid versus an $800 lid. You know, it's not something where you go, yeah, I'll try. And if I have to, like a pair of shoes. They don't fit right. I'll just leave it in the closet. Well, no, I know you're not going to do that with this. Well, I, I was worried this. about the helmet. I'll be honest with you. When I was, when I was figuring out between the mission, I'm like, I really like the look of, and I and the, how light it is. It like it's amazing. So I didn't, I didn't regret buying it. I just like I, I don't know. I just I want to try out the mission this year and and see how it works because I want to like uh, Nunzio. He, he was telling me because I asked him. I'm like, what do you think? He yeah. he, he's like Richard. It's the best helmet I've ever owned. So yeah, we'll nice. see right now. Nice. No, that's cool. Yeah, what, what's the okay? Cool. 
uh, sometimes now, other than nuclear working so well on Gary's rides, you can't beat the price because you get the pair of communicators. Yeah. Instead of one for the same price. Yeah. Oh so yeah, for I, sure. Like I haven't looked right. in it. Like how many other communicators are there? Are there, is there a, is there a whack load or is there just yeah, a Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a few, there's four maybe that are in the top, but I, yeah. you know, like, again, I look. I can't comment I, cause I don't own any of them. So no. And I mean, I, I, I was seriously thinking, and David and I were talking actually when I was shopping, and I was seriously thinking that, you know what, like maybe there is something that's a little better and integrated and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I went back to Uclear. It's, it, they, the rest, the read the reviews and, and, you know, and there's even some people trying to make the others look way better than what they actually are. Yeah. And it's, it's really sad to see when they, when, and that's the thing, if you take a product and you, you take another one, such as a good product like Uclear, and you, you modify it to make it worse than it actually is for the benefit of your product. There's something that product's not well, telling yeah, you. Know, and you know what, Gary, you and I were saying this, man, when, you know, if we review some sleds this year or whatever other products, man, I mean, you're going to, but we're going to be honest. I'm not, you know, this, I'm yeah, not going to share exactly. I'll exactly. tell you something that I don't like about something and vice versa, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's going to be a great season. Be I'm hoping so. Well, I was saying to Steve, hey, it's already starting to snow out west for the guys out west. And he's like, well, yeah. it's September. And I'm yeah. like, hey, it's getting me excited when I see the mountain guys out there. Like, what's I know, his name? I know. He, the valley. He, 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 yeah. he opened up his door and there was snow everywhere, man. It's like, yes. I, love no, I know it. they're out west. So they're, they're, it's, it's, it's coming. So, hey, I was, I was riding November 11th last year. Are you serious? Yeah, actually, yeah. The, the video I have on my YouTube, and I only have one video, that was, it was in November. Yeah, I November got, yeah, 11th. Yeah. And now, I would trade that first ride on November 11th to my, have my first ride end of December and have a better year because it started late up north, as you're aware, right? Yeah, yeah. So, the lakes know, so. were terrible last year, eh? Yeah. Oh, they were horrible. So yeah. sometimes now he's in the U.S. as well. Okay. Uh, he said, there's only one other brand that compares to U Uclear, but you pay almost $400 for one communicator, not two. So, yeah, it, the mesh is cool. The, the mesh is something with two riders you don't really think about. But when yeah. you bring the third rider, and, and I had the issue with, with when we did the ATV ride with Simon, Dino and I, we put the three, um, the three Uclear in the helmets. And we didn't know why I kept getting dropped, but we kept changing positions in order. And, and it wasn't it was. until I talked to, to David that you can't. you got to stay in the order that, that you sync them in, right? But you, when and you go this, to the newer one, you can move all over the place, which is great. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You don't even have to think about it. And that's, it drove us bonkers that day that, that yeah. there was only really two of us that could, could communicate. The third guy was always lost. Had we got back in the original order I, I, I synced them in, we would yeah. have been fine the whole day, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's kind of... Yeah. Kind of but, you know, it's one of those things that you get. I don't know. That's part of the thing. Like, I mean, I, I got a tech fest last year and, and you know what? I, I can't ride without it. Without one now. I feel I feel naked or I feel like, you know, I'm my buddy. Good. My good buddy, Gord there. He, he had a little bit of an accident a couple of years ago. He had an, uh, an ice ice crack. Yeah. And, you know, cracked a couple of his ribs and that. And he was at a commission for a while, man. Like, you know what? It's, you know, so having protection and, and, and safety stuff for it. There's nothing wrong with it, man. So yeah, I went out. I went out one time, and I I don't know why, but I I don't know whether we had them on the charger or whatever. And I I just Drew and I just went out for a quick ride. We were going home that morning. We didn't put them on, and it, we were like like both of us had made a comment about how how uncomfortable it was. Like like we couldn't. We had to get off the sleds to talk, and it was like there. It just it wasn't the same experience at all. It's so funny that you get used to technology and then. You, you you lose that technology. It's like not having your cell phone for a week, you know, and you'd have to get out of your car and use a pay phone every time you wanted to make a call to your buddies, right? So it's it's no different in that technology. But yeah, yeah. So, um, I lost your mic there. Hold on, are you there? Sorry about that. I lost my headset. I had to put my. Oh, okay. Yeah, you you went mute could... there, but yeah, yeah. So so, so do you um. Do you ride with a, like any type of Under Armour, like like uh, a tech vest or anything? Yeah, well, yeah. Drew and I both have tech vests. Yeah, yeah so, and but, that, but that's thing. Yeah. Time, though, if you don't put that on, do you not feel like you're exposed? Like you know, like absolutely, absolutely. It's the same. It's the exact same thing. Hey, yeah. and I've seen lots of photos and and stuff. And if you get hit by a branch or whatever, uh, you'll be skewered. Like it's a, yeah. it's one of those things like wearing a seatbelt in your car. You just feel like you're you're yeah. better. It's it, it's confident. 
you hear this all the time, confidence inspiring. And that's yep. the thing. It gives you more confidence to, to yep. push your abilities because you have that safety net in place. So yeah. Yeah, we'll that's see if we can get the guys from from TechFest on too. They're great, man. I went up yeah, there. Yeah, we'll do that. Know, went up there. Steve just ordered one too. My good buddy Steve, he, he ordered yeah, one for this year. And I uh, want to do that. We, yeah, we yeah. both got them. So they're great hey, to listen, work with. They're a great local gotta, company to work with. They're up in Kinmount, and it's all made local. And he uses top of the line quality. Like he does not use garbage, garbage uh, armor. You know that too. In, in this yeah, for sure. It's and it's they're awesome. They've got their own sublimation department there, so yeah, everything's yeah, made in house. Yeah, in Canada, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and they make sled covers too, which look kind of neat as well. Yeah, they're, they're getting back into stuff. They were doing a lot of um, uh, medical uh, stuff, gowns and all that during this COVID and that during their time. Like, and they're still pretty busy with that because I, I went and dropped off my old vest to get a smaller size. I need to go down to size, and they uh, they were great, man. But they're nice. busy. They got a huge order from BRP, and they make they make them for Klein. So yeah, you know, so yeah. it's pretty right, good. good. So, yeah, speaking but, of speaking of making things i print t-shirts and i'm going to actually give away a shirt so let's let's do this let's do this nice. if you say uh if you say t-shirt me gary in the comments yeah um in one in one week i'll make a draw and we'll do it live <laughs> and the winner will get a, a mud brats t-shirt how's yeah. that yeah okay yes, so yeah. you have you have to say t-shirt actually, me in the comments Actually, maybe even plug some of your uh, um, your hoodies and stuff too, because I, I was looking at those. We were talking about that. There's different stuff that you can do too. So, yeah, you know what? We'll do that next. We'll do that next <laughs> show there too. Like all custom, but it's stuff like this. Ca is my uh, is the website for my uh, my custom clothing. Yeah. And there's some the snowmobiling is calling shirts are you've seen those from other people, but mine are are quite unique. So go yeah. to stuff like this. Ca and yeah. check out the products there in the shop and. And you'll see what I'm talking about. But I do have to sign off, Richard. I thank you yeah, again. No problem. But it was a good show. Time, yeah, man. And good. We got uh, Rev Ryder coming in next year. Bobby uh, coming in next week with us. So that'll, that'll yeah, be for sure. And I think I, I mentioned the beginning, the, the beginning of the show, I ended up I ended up buying myself just because watching his videos, I wanted to try something different. So I love it. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Yeah. No, it's a it's a good sport and a good community. So thank you, everybody, for watching here and, yeah. uh, and commenting during the show. And... Uh, it's pretty good. So, oh man, you start getting all these manufacturers on. I can see the season getting more expensive. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. So, and here we go. T-shirt me right there. We got the first one. So you comment oh, there's, like there's that. There's a call ahead of them. There's a, oh yeah, perfect. Where we yeah, got here? There we yeah. go. T-shirt me, Gary. Right on. Jesse's awesome. We're gonna be talking to him this year too. He's he's got a new XRS 850 with a new gauge package. Um, at the dealer right now being assembled. So nice. he's stoked. I talked to him a lot this week. He's it sounds like a good cat. So it's uh it'll be great. So hopefully we'll see some some stuff. And as well, if anybody wants to share a photo like I've shared at the beginning of this stream, you can send them to fan photo at mudbrats.com. I'll put a link down in the description after the video goes public. Uh, and uh, and Richard, send us a video, send us a story, and uh, and we will um, we yeah, will sure. you know we'll actually feature it on the next show. How's that? Okay. Sounds good, man. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. It was a great show, and uh, we'll see you <clears throat> next week. Okay. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon, bud. Yep. Bye, bye.